So what have you heard from American merchants, Bill? Oh, well, I've, um, not, not that much, actually. Uh, in relation to last year, I'd agree with what Chris said, that um, 09 has been everybody's obsession up to date. Um, this time last year, we were into our fourth month of people phoning us and yelling and screaming in advance to get certain wines. This year, that hasn't happened. So, you know, I think the reputation of the vintage is still uh, uh, an unknown quantity. Um, until very recently, because all the tastings happened only last week, and everybody's just beginning to filter back home, and the news is getting out on the blogs, and some of the advanced journalists are just getting out now. So it's very recent for everybody. I don't think everybody in front of that really had the perception that Bordeaux had produced a great vintage. And even Bordeaux itself uh, was produced, had a few question marks about it being a great vintage early on. I think the, the vintage has grown on people because it's such a difficult vintage to taste. Uh, the tannins are so complicated uh, and there's just so much of everything in those wines. Not only the alcohol, not only the fruit, but also this extraordinary tannin, this extraordinary freshness going through it. And I think everybody was a little bit, you know, we have no experience of that. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly I don't. Yeah, it's very tannic. It's, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And when you get a tannic vintage, you know, you wonder, your immediate reaction is to say, oh, well, this is going to be a long-lived vintage. Yeah. Which, which may be a totally false idea. Maybe the 09s will live for longer. We, we don't know. I, I just get the impression people are a little bit lost with the, the 2010s. They had been told, everybody's been told before coming to taste that this was a great vintage or a very good vintage. And, and, and somehow the 09s are still dominating the show. Okay. All right, thanks.